Hello and welcome to Turbo Thumbs. I am Rasta Joe and this is Techno Thumbs, the show that's all about our gaming gear. Today we're talking about the unforgettable GameCube controller. These little beauties are unique to say the least. Released alongside the GameCube in September of 2001 in Japan, they were the first controllers to feature analog trigger buttons with a large range of sensitivity. They originally came in 22 different color and logo combinations, and now with the Smash 4 branded versions, there are 23. And that's just the first party ones. Nintendo even released a wireless version called the Wavebird that used two AA batteries and had 16 different radio frequencies so that as many people could use them all in the same room. The only thing they lacked was the rumble motor because it shortened battery life. I got this one on release day with my black GameCube and since then it's seen heavy use. The rubber pieces on the joysticks have been chewed on by a teething baby so much so that the main joysticks rubber piece is just gone. The A and B buttons used to be a little mushy but have miraculously healed over time. The face buttons of the GameCube controller are probably the most distinctive feature. The A and B buttons are circular like on most game controllers but the X and Y buttons are oblong and curved. This in addition to being two of the only bland colored objects really draws in your eye. The A button sits dead center of the right side and dwarfs the other buttons around it. The B button, which is probably the second most used of all the buttons, ironically is the smallest. It originally shared the curved design of the X and Y buttons, but was changed for final production. The C stick was an upgrade over the four C buttons of the Nintendo 64 controller. It added not only more directions, but analog control for more precision as well. It's also the only first party joystick without a widened, flattened head, and the only stick to be named with a letter, much like buttons. Z is another shoulder button, but it's so much smaller than, and unlike L and R, that it kind of seems like an afterthought. It also partially obscures the label on the R button. Although the button layout may look odd, everything is easy to reach and comfortable to use. And now, Let's take a look inside. And because it's Nintendo, we get to use the Tri-Wing Screwdriver. Alright, so here we go. We got the Tri-Wing Screwdriver. And the GameCube controller is held together with six Tri-Wing screws. So we'll go ahead and open that up. <laughs> up start with the back piece so all the buttons on the front don't fall out all right so up here you can see the uh, shoulder buttons We've got a long range there back here these sliders I'm not sure how well you can see them maybe this one's better these sliders, uh, they register, well the, the shoulder buttons grab them and they register how much pressure you're applying and so the sliders themselves aren't spring loaded so wherever you put them they'll stay but the buttons are spring loaded so they'll drag them back to the top when you let go of the button. You can see how the sensitivity works in game. the Z button right here so we'll take that out uh, you can really see the uh, dirt that's collected in here if you look along this ridge I'm not sure if you can see that or not it's very very dirty from years of use although I have cleaned it a 
few times in the past. And if you look right here, this is the rumble motor. So this part gets turned and that's how you feel the rumble. There's a weight inside there that goes around and creates the rumble sensation. Down here on these two things that are sticking out, these are where the L and R buttons make their final click to register a full press of the button. Let's see if I can get that closer. There you go. Okay. Anyway, so here's the uh, C stick. It gets its own little board. It sticks up down there. All right. And if you look here, you can see that the cord comes in, wraps around this peg here, and then goes uh, and splits up into its individual wires. And there's a connector here where it connects to the board. So I want to loosen the wire first so it doesn't stick on there when we take the board out. All right, I got that loose. So now I'll pull the board out and we'll go back to the board in a second. Here's the underside of all the buttons. There's A, B, uh, Y, and X. Hopefully you can see those well. Here's the rubber piece for the start button. And I don't know if I've shown this before, but on the rubber pieces, there's this little black spot. And that part is conductive. And what it'll do is it connects the two portions of uh, its spot on the PCB. So it connects those two, electricity flows through, and then it registers the button press. And you can see here's another rubber piece for the D-pad. You can see that it's got uh, those four little conductive spots. And up here are the A, B, X, and Y buttons. I'll pop those off. Same thing underneath. And you can see there that uh, those are the conductive parts, or I'm sorry, those are uh, where the buttons hit. They're even labeled B, A, X, Y. Up here is the Z button. The camera doesn't want to focus on it for some reason. Let's see if I can get it to focus. That's better. So here's where the Z button presses. Just a tiny little button there. And let's look at the joystick. So the joystick here, you can pull it off. Well, first let me say that there's, you can see there's a lot of play in the main joystick here. And that's from tons of use. If you just pull it straight up, it comes off. There's the underside of that. And here, it's... Uh, the inside of the joystick. So when you move the joystick sideways, it moves these uh, arch-shaped parts sideways to register movement. And up and down, there's a very thin piece of metal inside, right about there, on both up and down parts of the joystick. And from being used so much, that metal has gotten bent so that's why it's so loose with my C stick there is just a tiny bit of play but extremely little and one interesting thing is that you can remove both sticks and swap them if you'd like so I could put the C stick on there and now the C stick is my main stick and obviously I can put the uh, the main stick down here for the C stick. So I don't see much corrosion on here, so that's good. I won't have to do much cleanup. Uh, you probably can't tell, but I can see some little like hairs that have gotten in 
and stuck themselves to things. So I can remove those, but I'm sure they're not impeding anything. But um, yeah, so that's what the inside looks like. So as I was showing you before, uh, in the cracks where the two plastic pieces connect, sweat gets in there and it dries up a lot of times. So let me show you how nasty that stuff is. So like you can, it's pretty hard and crusty. You can scrape it off like with your fingernails or whatever. Um, you might rather use a paper towel, like a moistened paper towel, but see, see that nastiness? That's what sweat turns into when it dries up inside a controller. So I'm gonna clean this up before I put it back together. Okay, so I've cleaned out the casings and I've cleaned up all the buttons and sticks as much as I can. So let's start putting them back together. So I'm gonna start by putting the buttons in here. There we go. Making sure I got X and Y in the right spots. And we need D pad to go here. And there's the start button. So tiny. Look how small that is. And the start button rubber piece fits in there like that all right now I'm gonna set this aside and actually let's see if I can put the rubber piece pieces where they go first all right and the d-pad It's on this central peg and this peg right here. Can we do this one right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so now I'll put that aside. Oh no, I'm sorry. One more thing. The Z button. You have to compress the spring on the back of it when you stick it in. And also, you gotta get, where is it? You gotta get that little stud to sit in this little hole right here. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'll put the stud in. Oh man, it really wants to be a pain. Okay. So stud in, spring compressed, now it sits in there and it's tight and you can see that it'll work just like the button. So we just need to get the board to sit over it. But before that we got to put our uh, joysticks back on. And if you look at the shape of the hole inside there, you can see that it's designed so it'll only go one way. So that's on. And same thing with the hole inside the C stick. It's got to be oriented in the right direction. There we go. Okay. And now. Flip it so we can stick it in the proper way. Alright, so it kind of slides and drops in there. And the C sticks little mini board goes around that peg there. And now make sure both sliders are all the way up. Oh, forgot one thing. I gotta get the 
cord to go around that peg there. Otherwise, there's not going to be room. So I'll slide that in. Okay, that should be good. Make sure the cord is coming up out through this hole there. And hopefully this will slide it right into place. Oh yeah, very smooth. All right, and then all that's left is to uh, put the screws back in. You can see everything works. This is still a little loose, but there's not much I can do about that. All the shoulder buttons are good. All right, so I'll screw it back in and we'll finish up. So now it's all cleaned up and everything's in perfect working order, except for a little bit of play in the joystick. But there's not much I can do about that. That's it for this time on Techno Thumbs. If you like what you've seen here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash turbo thumbs or on Twitter at twitter.com slash turbo underscore thumbs. I am Rasta Joe, and thank you for checking out Turbo Thumbs.